Shalom, Shalom, once again. Now, this is two other two other books. Well, let's just present all three of them. These are some three of the, the, the new books. This one, as we mentioned um, previously, is, 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 is updated. We have some introductory notes that we hope can better explain why we thought this book was so interesting and significant, um, that it connects with certain um, prophetical signs um, throughout throughout history and our story, even connecting the heavenly signs with ancient Egypt as well as the Bible and can better help I and I peoples, Ethiopian Hebrews and Lek Arastafari, um, really overstand and see the prophecy, the biblical prophecy in its true context, as well as there's a significant word in this book that points to certain heavenly signs that preceded um, and, and, and that was at the time of the birth of Lich Tafari or of His Imperial Majesty, the Son of Man. So the introductory notes in this version, this is already available. Some probably already have it, but we wanted to announce it because the last time we spoke about this particular book, um, it didn't have those introductory notes in it. But as of that time, we've updated it. We wrote about, I think, seven to ten pages or so just to try to explain a little bit more um, make that connection between the heavenly signs that occurred in 1892 and Dr. E.W. Bullinger here in his 1893 work, he speaks about the signs that occurred one year previously, and he connects these signs with um, that they say they are similar in the, in, in the context and the biblical prophetic context with the coming of the Son of Man. In other words, these same signs, heavenly signs of new stars and different alignments and certain constellations were there in the time of Yeshua HaMoshiach or of the Son of God, Jesus Christos. And he asks whether these same signs are, are no doubt the signs that Christ even speaks about in Matthew chapter 24 concerning the, what's called the return of Christ or what we know as Christ in his kingly character, or the revelation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the person of Haile Selassie I, King of Kings of Ethiopia, conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. So this book is very, very interesting, and um, get a copy of it if you can, if you could check out I and I introductory notes. Um, that might even help um, better at least um, put some of the the prophetic signs from the scripture and the evidence. That's the key thing. There, there is we're getting more and more evidence of things that were said by faith by earlier generations of Rastafari. Now we are actually able with this new information, superhighway, Daniel's prophecy coming to pass. They shall go to and fro and knowledge shall increase. Well, knowledge is definitely increasing. So, you know, get a chance to learn it. Education is the key, as His Imperial Majesty um, states. There's, a, there's the religion speech where he speaks about how man is naturally selfish and that even if he gains education and learning, unless he has like that moral, the morality that the faith teaches, he's going to use that education or that knowledge selfishly. And this is kind of what we see in this modern world. There's, there's education, there's learning, there's knowledge, but it's not being used for the good of all. So therefore, his majesty reminds us that we need that, as ones would say, that moral, so to speak, compass, or we need a moral foundation for it. And that is our faith. You understand? That is our holy covenant or our divine heritage that's our faith, which we have been articulating and teaching on, right? Now, these two books here, this is all part of the Rastafari Book Club right here, and these are, two, these are some updates. They're basically the same book, right? They're basically the same book. We want to try some different colors of the red. So you can, you know, get the lighter red or the darker red, you know, so forth and so on. We want to see how the colors would come out. And they're under two slightly different names, right? One is the liturgy book of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church, right? The Ethiopian 
Orthodox Suhaito Church, a liturgy book, and the other one is the Ethiopian liturgy of St. Dioscorus, of Kedus uh, Dioscorus. And um, let's, let's see if we can show you this up close. Here's, here's, here's a close-up copy. I don't know how the red is going to come out right there. Isn't that interesting right there? You see that? That's a La Labella Cross. Now, those who are familiar will recognize the, the Kabbalistic significance of that, the tree, the tree of life, the cross of Christ, so forth and so on, or the Beta Christian as well. It's almost like a layout of the Beta Christian. Well, that's the, that's um, uh, Kedus uh, Lalibela's um, cross right there. So this is in Gutes, Amharic, and it has English as well as an English phonetic transcription. Right, an English phonetic transcription. So, for those of the brothers and sisters who are continuing in their Amharic and their Ethiopian divine heritage learning, this book will definitely it's is is very much needed. You understand? So, when one does decide to say maybe attend the Ethiopian church, um, one can follow along with the liturgy, and by studying it, can better understand the Ethiopian witness to the faith of Christ. You know, and the Ethiopian witness to the faith of Christ. So this book is available now. So these two books right here, we just want to point out both of them basically uh, in content and content are the same book. Both of these books right here are the same book. But we we have slightly different names for it. One is the Ethiopian Liturgy of St. Dioscorus and the other is the liturgy book of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church. And what's contained in this, let's give you the table of contents briefly. Some of you all might be familiar with it. First of all, it has a basic introduction, but then it deals with the Serata Kedase, or the order of the liturgy, which is known as the preparatory service. Then it has the Kedase Hawariyat, or what's called the Anaphora, the anaphora, um, or the liturgy, really, of the apostles. Then it has the Abatachin Hoi Mezmur, um, or the Our Father hymn, or the Our Father psalm. Then it has the Imabetachin Salot, which is the prayer of Our Lady, or the prayer of the Mother of Our House, or the Hail Mary prayer. Then it has the Imabete Mariam Hoy Mesmor, which is um, my, oh my, my Lady Mary psalm. Then it has the Kedase Diochorus, 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 which is Dioscorus by translation, the anaphora or the liturgy of St. Dioscorus. Diochorus. Then it has Zelote Sittahat Zeweldena Beinte Kedisat, the prayer of the absolution of the Son and um, succeeding prayer or concerning the Holy. Um, then, lastly but not leastly, it has the Zelote Kidan or the prayer of the covenant, the prayer of the covenant, and that kind of doves with our divine heritage. So when we as um, brothers and sisters and we the black people who recognize the link with the Ethiopian World Federation and reading that preamble, it speaks about um, our divine heritage and this particular day being um, the 71st memorial of the New Day, or Ethiopian, Imperial Ethiopian Independence Day, which we read briefly to you from this particular um, speech of His Imperial Majesty, May 5th, if you look at the content of this and you read it and you meditate on it um, and you start to connect the dots, you understand, you recognize why this particular book, you understand, and study of it, like we said, it's in English, 
It's in English with English phonetic transcription, and it also has the Gutas and the Amharic translation of the ancient Gutas liturgy. So um, get a copy, you know, get a copy today, my brothers and sisters. All right, so these are some of the new books that we have available in the Rastafari Book Club and I and I Rastafari Book Club. All right? All right. Shalom Rastafari.